Good morning and welcome to worship at Vesa Lutheran Church. This is the worship service for Sunday, August 9th. Today's scripture reading, primary scripture reading, is from the fifth chapter of Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. This reading is full of scriptural nuggets. There, and I'm going to um, talk a little bit about five of them during my sermon for today. We continue now with our call to worship. In Jesus Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. This newness is from God who has reconciled us through Jesus Christ. Rejoice and be glad. Everything has become new. And we turn now to the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear differences and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew and in your spirit lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope. For hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymnal now to hymn number 635, We Walk by Faith. Hymn number 635. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray together. God, our maker and redeemer, you have made us ambassadors called to bear witness to the gospel. Enable us to be faithful to our calling to make known your promises to all the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture texts for today are 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and a brief reading from Mark chapter 8. We begin with the, with the Corinthians passage. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, if indeed when we have taken it off we will not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan under our burden, because we wish not to be unclothed, but to be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, 
even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So, we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Here ends our reading from the epistle to the Corinthians. Our gospel reading for today is from Mark chapter 8. They came to Bethsaida. Some people brought a blind man to Jesus and begged him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had put saliva on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, can you see anything? And the man looked up and said, I can see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again and he looked intently and his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Then he sent him away to his home, saying, Do not even go into the village. The Gospel of the Lord. I invite you to turn in your hymn books now to the hymn number 763, My Life Flows On in Endless Song, hymn number 763.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The fifth chapter of the second letter to the church in Corinth contains so many good verses, nuggets, if you will, that encourage us to walk by faith. Today I'm going to look briefly at five of these nuggets. The first one is verse number one. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Paul is assuring us and reassuring us, because sometimes we need to hear it over and over again, that when our body is destroyed, in other words, when we die, we have a building from God that somehow and in some way God is re going to restore us and give us a heavenly tent rather than the earthly tent we currently have. And how do we know that this is true? Because of Jesus. Because Jesus died and was raised. He is our proof of resurrection. Paul goes on in that section to talk about how we might be groaning in our earthly tent and about how we might be longing to take on our heavenly body. But in spite of our longing, we are encouraged by him to wait and to trust. Why? Because God has given us the Holy Spirit, a spirit which resides within us. And our sense of the spirit acts as a guarantee. It's kind of like a piece of paper that we hold in our possession that reminds us that, yes, You've, there is a claim on you. It's a, it's a surety. It's an insurance policy. Someday we will find ourselves in our heavenly tent, and God's Holy Spirit reminds us of that. And when that happens, all the travails, the suffering, the sickness, the brokenness that exists in our bodies and in our world will go away. The second verse that I want to draw your attention to is verse 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. One of my children's resources had a great example. It said, take an egg. We assume that there is egg white and egg yolk inside this egg. We have faith that this is true. Now we can crack open the contents and examine it, and the cracking open of the egg allows us to personally experience it and know that it's true. Every person who wonders about whether it's true can get an egg and crack it open. But that's where our comparison with resurrection and the hope of the resurrection ends, because we don't have hard and fast living proof that heaven exists or that there is life after death. We have the eyewitness stories of Mary Magdalene and Peter, James, John, and the other disciples that Jesus was raised from the dead. These stories come from witnesses and have been passed down from generation to generation. Jesus is our only proof that resurrection is real. And so we choose to believe or not, we walk by faith, choosing to believe. But we cannot walk by sight. We cannot walk with hard proof. We walk by faith and not by sight. The third verse is verse 14. For the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all. In this verse, Paul isn't necessarily saying that he is urged on because of his personal love of Jesus. What he is saying is that because of his personal experience of he continues to share this news with anyone who will listen. Paul is certain that Jesus died for all people and that Jesus did so out of love. That two-word phrase, all people, is important. In the early years of the church, most of the sharing of the stories of Jesus took place within the Jewish community. The larger Roman Empire and all of the peoples that comprised the Roman Empire, for the most part, looked at um, 
And it's true, because most of the early disciples were Jewish, and they spent most of their time sharing this message of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection with other Jews. Paul, the apostle, was also a Jew. However, somewhere along the way, he comes to realize the importance of that phrase, all people. He realizes that there are large numbers of non-Jewish people that are not hearing about God's love decision to go to share the message with them. That all people in his eyes really does mean all people. And that teaching is important for us to consider as we think about the work of ministry that God is calling us to. Now, how does Paul justify his work with non-Jewish people throughout the Roman Empire? When someone questions his rationale for talking to them, how does he respond? That's where verse 17 is helpful. It says, so if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. In Christ, those people were new creations. They are not who they once were. God has reformed and reshaped them into something new. And as new creations, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and were given gifts to use to build up the body of Christ. The same is true for us. In Christ, we are new creations. We are not who we once were. God has reformed and reshaped us to be something new. As new creations, we are filled with the Holy Spirit and given gifts to use to build up the body of Christ. Now, we may not always know or recognize that we have a particular gift, but God does. And we may not know or recognize how this gift is being exercised through the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to do great good, but rest assured, it is. I heard a story this week about how a rift was developing between two people. A third person heard about this rift and used her words to mend it. That the rift was repaired, or that the rift be repaired, was important for the good of the larger community, and the third person knew that. She could have ignored the rift. She could have just let it go, let it get bigger, but she intervened and reconciliation was achieved. She used the gift of her words to make things better. And she may not have even realized what, that what she had done was actually for the greater good of the community. Reconciliation is the focal point for the last verse that I want to consider. One re definition for reconciliation is the restoration of friendly relations. Paul writes in verse 19 that in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. Through the saving actions of Jesus, God reconciled the world, the whole entire world, and everyone in it to God. We are back on friendly terms with God. We don't have anything to fear occurred, not because of anything we did to earn it or did to convince God that it should be done, but rather God did it because God so loved the world and everyone in the world. There is, however, an expectation or perhaps an understanding. The Apostle Paul would argue that a true grasp of this amazing love that God has for us would so overwhelm and exhilarate us that we would not be able to be quiet that, going back to verse 14, recognizing this love of Christ for us would cause us, would spur us on to share the message of God's love with anyone and everyone. To sum up, as believers in Jesus, we are assured of resurrection, and even if life on this earth is a misery, we can always look forward to the discarding of our earthly tent and being recreated with a heaven. We'll do this so we walk by faith and not by sight. We trust that God will act, and in faith we believe in God's promises. 
We believe that Jesus the Messiah died for everyone, that his death was an act of supreme love that is almost beyond our imagination and cannot perfectly express God's love to others, we are called to do the best that we can. We are God's representatives here on earth, God's ambassadors. That's a big responsibility. But God believes in us enough to give us that responsibility, trusting that we will somehow and in some way live it out. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, Thank you for the gift of being created anew. Help us to be ambassadors for Christ in this world, sharing your love with all people. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymn book to hymn number 449, We Know That Christ Is Raised, hymn number 449. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's spend a little time in prayer now. Good and gracious God, we pray for your whole church throughout the world. Give courage in the midst of storms so that we see and hear Jesus calling, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. We bring before you the people of Beirut, Lebanon, whose homes and cities were devastated by the explosion on Tuesday. Bring them comfort through the presence of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation, our state, and all of our elected leaders. May conflict and enmity be set aside for the well-being of our country and its people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in need. Accompany all who are lonely. Hear the voices of those who cry out in anguish and support those who are frustrated in their search for an affordable place to live. We pray for those suffering this day. Max Tilderquist, Linda Thompson, Scott Sorensen, Jesse Otto, Einer Norman, Barbara Mouché, and David Bruyne. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our congregation. You have gathered us here today as your people, and we thank you for this gift. We pray for other faith gatherings, in particular the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Red Wing and Riverwood Community Church in Cannon Falls. We ask you to sustain these sisters and brothers in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for students and teachers, school principals, superintendents, bus drivers, and all the additional support staff who are preparing for a new school year. Grant them wisdom and discernment. Supply them generously with your grace so that they may come with a sustainable school year plan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Madison McCann, John Fluger, Christopher Schaefer, Carolyn Gardner, and Lucas Anderson who celebrate birthdays this week. Bless them and keep them. Be with them in their going out and their coming in. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our generosity moment for today, I just wanted to let you know, is that at this moment, as we are recording, uh, the Red Cross is doing a blood drive down in the Lutheran Center. And they have 35 appointments scheduled for people to donate blood. That's basically a full schedule. And the generosity part of it is simply that we, as a congregation, are able to provide them with this facility, knowing full well the need is so very great. So thank you all for your ongoing and continued support for everything that we do here at VESA. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may consume your communion portions at this time if you have them at home with you. Our musical interlude today is Hark the Herald Angels Sing, but in particular it is the third verse, which is very appropriate for our setting, uh, for our theme, our scriptural lessons for this day. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ be with you now and always. Amen. Let us pray. 
God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymn books to hymn number 665, Rise, Shine, You People. Hymn number 665. Some announcements before we close our worship service. First of all, thank you for attending worship this day, especially if it's on the internet. It's good to take time to give thanks and praise to God for all his benefits to us. Taking the time to watch this service is, an, is doing exactly that. We have resumed Tuesday morning coffee and would welcome your presence. Yes, we social distance. Yes, we wear masks. Yes, we drink coffee. And if the weather cooperates and the numbers are high enough, we gather outdoors. You would be welcome. We have also resumed Wednesday evening worship. Typically, this is a small group. And if that would make you feel more comfortable, then please come. Yes, we social distance. Yes, we wear masks. We always offer communion, and if you are hungry for the sacrament and want to gather with a few people, Wednesday evening worship might be an opportunity for you. Finally, Vacation Bible School. We are now accepting registrations for Vacation Bible School. The program will be held August 24, 25, 26, 27, that's a Monday through a Thursday, from 6 o'clock in the evening until 7.30. Our theme is Journey with Jesus through Holy Week. So each evening session will highlight one of the important days of Holy Week, Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and of course, Easter. There will be stories. There will be age-appropriate activities. There will be music. It's going to be a great event. We close our worship service now with a blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.